you've talked about the past, uh, about using certain hymns as prayers, and uh, this next hymn that you've chosen is an example of that as well. So can you say why you chose it and how you use it? Yeah. Um, let me say, first and foremost, I'm a pretty rubbish priest and a pretty rubbish bishop. And um, <laughs> often it's, it's good to take stock of your life and think, what do I like doing? I used to talk to people who wanted to be ordained and I used to say, well, what activity do you think you were born for? What activity do you think you were born to do? And they often used to give me churchy answers like, oh, I was born to take even song. And I said, yeah, sure you were. But come on, be honest. And um, I do love mending things. I do love taking things apart and occasionally getting them back together again. So, you know, when my wife's washing machine goes wrong, I'm in there with a screwdriver and occasionally I'm successful and occasionally not. But I think faith is about mending things, about God wanting to mend his world. So it works out like that. From a young age, I've had a heart for people who were struggling and every time I see anybody struggling, either if they're poorly or limping along or life is obviously treating them harshly. My heart goes out to them and I thought everybody was like this, but I guess not. In my mind's eye, I see Christ wrapping his arms around them. Um, just wrapping his arms around them. And so those are the things that have drawn, dr driven my ministry. I don't think of myself as very good at prayer, not very disciplined at prayer. But my experience of prayer is that it's not really something you do, but something that finds you something that finds you and often, often, often you think oh i must do more prayer but if you think about hymns and think about your favorite hymns you didn't sit down with a hymn book one day and think i'm going to find five favorite hymns those hymns found you those hymns found you you heard a tune and it caught you that happened time and time to me as a boy and, and as a man and i think prayer finds you as I say, we tend to think of it as an object, that it's something we do and we get all hung up about not doing enough. But I think it's a subject, it's a sort of, almost like has a sort of life of its own, which finds you and breathes through you, as do hymns. I find hymns, again, I assume everybody did this, and I suppose they do to a certain extent, but one trick I, I learned quite late on in my ministry, ten years in really, was to just learn a few hymns off by heart and use them as prayers. They're easy to learn off by heart because they rhyme. And we all know, know them almost anyway. So they're not difficult, but they can lift your spirits. And often I'll sing them on the bicycle because it's better than a bicycle bell. Uh, because believe you me, when you're walking along, you've got a bishop bearing down and you're singing a hymn, but you don't have to get out of the way quickly. Um, <laughs> The best thing that works isn't him, actually, it's um, Roy Orbison singing, crying. And when I sing that, boy, oh, the path clears. But learning hymns off by heart, you know, I sing them on the bike or I sing them in the house, um, and whatever. And it, it focuses you, lifts your spirits when you can't find the words. Uh, the founder of a Jesuit movement, the present Pope Francis is a Jesuit, and Ignatius Loyola founded it in the... 16th, 17th century, and he'd been a, a brave soldier and had been wounded in battle and was laid up with a, a very, very, very bad leg. And he found, as he was sort of confined, that if he thought about all his conquests or all the women he conquered, then the pain got worse. When he sang a hymn, the pain lifted. And that experience made him found the Jesuit order, the um, Society of Jesus and a lot of that order is about praise and just praising God taking you out of yourself and lifting yourself and this next hymn really is one of the ones I learnt off by heart I had it at my consecration in Fandaf six and a bit years ago and it's Charles Wesley so it's a sort of, you know, famous hymn writer good Methodist, good Anglican uh, and it says it all it says it all about, because Christ is the love of my life. Christ is the love of my life. As I say, I'm not a very good priest, not a very good bishop, but Christ is the love of my life. I just never tire from enjoying reading about Christ in the Gospels. 
I think they give us an identity picture of him. And then we go out looking for him in the world. I don't go out as an expert on Christ because I'm not. But I'm looking for him and it's funny where you find him. When you go out looking for him, you find him in some strange places. When you don't look for him, you don't find him. There we are. But this hymn says it all. It talks really about Christ emptying himself and bleeding to rescue us. He came all the way, not just for a theological theory, not to found a church, not to start a religion, but he came all the way for you. It's personal. He came all the way to bring you home. And I think this hymn, of all the Slug Wesley hymns, catches that best of all. And it's personal. Christ has come to bring you home. All for you. And he'd do more. He'd do more to do that. So that's my that's <laughs> So we're singing now, and can it be, and that's, uh, and we stand for this again. <laughs> 